All right, hello everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. Please invite your friends. Uh, for sure, not many people knows that we are live on air, but soon they will come. Uh, you know, the Muslims always they try to come to us and they argue about the Trinity. And one of the funny things about Islam that Muslims they try to argue about the Trinity and thinking that if they say that we believe in one God, that will make them have a good statement or have uh, have a good stand. You see, the question is. If your God is one or ten, if they are true or not, who cares if they are one or seven or eleven? A God who says that a sperm coming from the backbone cannot be God. A God who says sperm, women have a sperm coming from the ribs cannot be God. A God who cannot remember which one he created first, the earth or the stars, he cannot be God. A God who do not remember anything he says cannot be God. So you try your best to speak about one God, one God, one God, but yet your God is a fiction and he is not exist. And the first question the Muslim will ask you, did Abraham believe in the Trinity? <clears throat> you see, first, first of all, there's nothing is called believe in the Trinity. There is something we have. It's called believe in God. Trinity is how God he present himself to us So we as a Christian we believe in one God and The foolish of Islam or the foolishness of Muslims who try to debate us. They try to make us as if we believe in three gods Which is absolutely hocus and stupid and not a single Christian believe in that So they are debating you about something you don't even believe in When a Muslim he says to you did Abraham believe in the Trinity then the Muslim should ask us when God he came to Abraham in the Old Testament as a man who was that God they didn't know when the book of Genesis says that God is a spirit God in the beginning the first verse in Genesis the first thing what God he said, you know that he created light He said let be light and light was and he formed the earth and the earth without any form without which mean which is not like uh, Designed and the Spirit of God was above it the Spirit of God So the first two words in the Bible we have God and we have a spirit and then we see God Coming to Abraham as a man. So here we go. We have God the Father God the Spirit and God the man this is in the Old Testament. This is not in the New Testament. And then we see that Jesus said in the New Testament that Abraham, he saw my day. And the Jews, they said to him, the same as the Muslims today, how, how you saw, how Abraham saw your day, but you are not even 50 years old. He said, the truth I say to you, that he saw my day. The truly, truly I say to you, he confirmed that. Before Abraham, I am. And yet the Muslim they say to us, where is the Trinity and where Jesus says I am God? He just he just confirmed that he is the God of Abraham. But as usual, I don't refute Muslims from my Bible because you are speaking to, to people who don't want to listen. So let us get them busted from their books. If you look with me in this uh, art picture, you will see uh, Abraham and he have two sons. But in the Quran, the Quran confirmed that Abraham, he have three sons. Let us go to the Quran. And the first question I want to ask. You focus too much on Abraham. Trying to say that Abraham... He never heard that God is a spirit and God in in heaven we call him the father and God as a man which is false but here we go if we go here we will see that the Quran is speak about children of Abraham and the children or the children of Abraham are mentioned in different verses as usual the Quran is all over place like you know you cannot read about Abraham in one place in the Quran the Quran is like a book of uh, 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 as I said just a few hours ago uh, uh, it's messed up disorganized 
where we can find the story of Abraham it's there's no story of Abraham it is it's all over so you will see here that there is a person his name is Ishmael and there is a person his name is Isaac and then in different verse there's a person his name is Jacob as we see in chapter 2 verse number 132 and this was the legacy that Abraham left to his sons and so did Jacob oh my sons Allah has chosen the faith for you okay what is the faith is Islam now you see if we ask the Muslims where is the book of the one you call him a prophet his name is Isaiah where is the book of Isaiah where is Isaiah teaching? Where is Jacob teaching? Where is the prophet? Uh, his name is Elijah. Where is the prophet who his name is uh, Job? Where is the prophet? All, all the prophets. How come Islam does not mention even their names? Why their names is missed and it's not located or cannot be located? So here we see. The Quran confirms something very important. When the Muslim they speak to us about Abraham, they have a very little information about this man who they called him Abraham. In the top of that, the Quran even could not quote the name of the father of Abraham correctly. As we see in this verse in the front of us, the Muslim believe that Abraham he have a father, his name is Azar. This is why it's not translated. This is why it's not translated. So when a Muslim he wants to speak about Abraham, he need to tell me how come the God of Islam he do not know a very simple information about Abraham. Since when Abraham, his father, his name is Azar. In fact, the verse here, Muhammad is a thief who stole something written about Abraham in the Aramaic, where the man he said to Abraham, or let us say Abraham, he said to his father, supposedly, Azar, which means foolish, which means what you are doing is foolish. Are you going to worship idols? But because Muhammad is a thief, and you do not know what Azar mean, he thought that Azar is the name of the father of Abraham. The same as he thought that Mary, she is the sister of Aaron. The same as he thought that Amran is the father of Aaron and the father of Moses and the father of Mary. Why he thought that? Because in the Old Testament it says that there is a three children of uh, uh uh, three, uh, three children, uh, Moses and Aaron and Maryam, those are brothers and sisters. So Muhammad, he said to himself, okay, Maryam is the mother of Jesus. Maryam is the sister of Aaron and the sister of Moses. So you owe sister of Moses or sister of Aaron. But here you notice with me. <laughs> The Muslims not only do not know anything about Abraham, they do not even know what the name of Abraham mean. If you ask a Muslim who keep repeating Abraham, 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 okay, what Abraham mean? They don't know. Was his name really Abraham? Is it his real name? Or this is a name was given to him. The same as you ask them, who is Israel? If you go right now and click and like search in the Quran, you will find that the name Israel mentioned many times, more than 40 times. Okay, who is Israel? 
I don't know. The only way to know is to read the Bible, which is very funny. <laughs> Remember, the Bible is not preserved, and the Muslims, they cannot depend on the Bible in anything, because supposedly, according to them, this book is corrupt. So how me as a Muslim, if I am a Muslim, God forbid, how I am going to know who is Israel? The Quran keeps saying, oh, children of Israel, oh, children of Israel, oh, children. Okay, who is Israel? They do not know. When somebody speak about a prophet and he claimed that he is too much in love with that prophet, or let us say he is the father of the prophet because even they claim that Muhammad himself is Abrahamic, which is proven to be false because we can prove that from the Quran. The Quran confirmed that Muhammad, he do not know what God, and he never heard of the true God. He was a pagan man, 100%. And actually, he's still a pagan man after he claimed to be a prophet, and we can prove that easy. If we go in the Quran, we will find the following. In chapter 42, <coughs> verse number 52, Excuse me if I'm coughing. I hope it's not bothering you from, from your side. And thus have we, by our command, sent inspiration to thee, though knowest not before what was revelation and what was faith. Muhammad never was Abrahamic. He never knew the God of Abraham, and he have nothing to do with the God of Abraham and the proof in the front of your eyes. It's a big fat lie. The Muslim keep repeating that Muhammad was Abrahamic. A person who knows the faith of Abraham, he will not be said to him in the Quran that you know not what faith is, what is revelation. He have no faith. He have no revelation. What does that mean? He have no connection with the true faith, and he have no connection with the true revelation. So how he can be Abrahamic? Then we try to understand who is Abraham in Islam after all this presentation, just to show you that Islam is really a mixed up religion. Muhammad trying to hijack some names to use them for his agenda to make you believe that he is coming from the same belief. But yet, and not only that, Muhammad, to make it more funny, Muhammad and the Muslims, they claim that the one who built the Kaaba, or let us say restore the Kaaba was Abraham which is against all history books and all what books written about Abraham. Not a single person in the world come to us with such a story that Abraham, he went all the way to Mecca, which does not make sense anyway. Because at the end of the day, Abraham is a person who, you know, he he, he is uh, like everybody at that time. I mean, they, they live by what? They don't have uh, companies. They don't have uh, uh, Microsoft. They don't have Lockheed. They don't have... Life is simple, and people either they grow, uh, you know, uh, vegetation, or they have animals, or both. So there is nowhere, no, no way, somebody is coming from a green land is going to immigrate to the middle of nowhere, whereas no people cannot even survive. So here we need to ask ourselves: the story about Abraham, the one who went to build the Kaaba, and he took with him his son Ishmael. And the funny here we find that Abraham he took Ishmael, but there is no mention of his wife Sarah, and there is no mention of his son Isaac, supposedly. So what happened to Isaac? Where is Isaac disappear in the story? If we go in the Quran, you will find the following. All right.
in chapter 2 verse number 124 and remember that Abraham was tried by his Lord with certain commands which he fulfilled he said I will make thee an imam, <laughs> imam to the nation he bleeded and also imams from the offspring he answered but my promise is not within the reach of evil doers <clears throat> Mm. From the children of Abraham, there is will be leaders of nations, and leaders here are religious leaders. But look what the Quran said. You see, Muhammad, when he speak, he always do make a huge mistakes. In chapter six, verse number eighty-four, it says. And we gave him Isaac and Jacob. But notice with me here that the Quran does not mention Ishmael in this verse. Did you notice that? The Muslims put between two brackets the word three because they are corrupt. You know, it's a corrupt religion because why you add a three if it's not there? Even in Arabic, it says, confirming that this is for two. وَوَهَبْنَا لَهُ إِسْحَاقَ وَيَعْقُوبَ كِلَا هَدَيْنَا Both. You see the word here? This is both. So why here they put the word, all three are guided? This is why I say, you cannot learn Islam from Muslims, because they lie. If we change the translation here, and I will tell you why they add the word three, because this is a disaster. Because the Quran here confirm that only from the, the children of Isaac and Jacob will be prophethood. If we change the translator, <clears throat> hmm? we change the translator, hold on. Uh, we take which one? All of them are the same garbage, but just to get them busted. <clears throat> uh, it was Joseph Ali, I think. We need to change it to something else. All right. Let us see Bictal. If Bictal will lie less or more. Look, Bictal here, he said each of them was guided. There's no three, which is still a lie. It doesn't say each of them, it says both. Let us go and see different translation. Maybe we can find one of them is being honest. Sometimes this mission is impossible. Let us see Shakir. Each was guided. Oof. Each was guided. I think they are copying from each other. Let us see. Al Maududi. This is a new guy. Hmm. Oh. You see here they are saying each. Look like they are stuck with each. However, it's make it clear. Let us not to go like because it says they are kila, which means both. Both, both, not each, both. Isaac and Jacob. We guided and we made from their offspring the prophethood. The Quran refused to name Ishmael in this verse. Why? Because in this verse mentioned the names of a prophet. If you look with me here, is the list of a prophets on all of them they are from the nation of Israel, the children of Abraham, all the way to the children of Israel. Not a single one of them is not 
a prophet for the Jews. Muhammad in this point, he was being a hypocrite to the Jews and he avoided to speak about Ishmael because he knew that the Jews don't believe and don't accept that Ishmael was a prophet. Because of that, Muhammad, he dropped his name. Otherwise, why the name of Ishmael is not there? Remember, Ishmael is the elder in the family, as even Muhammad speak of. So why Muhammad, he jumped the name of Ishmael in this story here? And then if we continue, we will find more, more stuff, which is weird, proven to us Muhammad to be a false prophet. Uh, <clears throat> let's go here. And here, the, the Trinity I'm going to speak about, starting with the children of Abraham. Can a Muslim tell us why Abraham, he have three kids? I mean, there is a connection with the story. Why in Islam everything is three? You see, are you just because you are copying from the Jews or it happened to be this way or it happened, there's, there is no reason for it. It just happened that there are three. We will see that. In chapter 19, verse number 49, it says the following. When he had turned away from them, from those whom they worship beside Allah, we bestowed on him Isaac and Jacob, and each one of them we made a prophet. What is Ishmael? Few verses after, you will see that Ishmael became a prophet. And also mentioned in the book the story of Ishmael. He was truly true to what promised, and he was one of the messengers. Actually, here it doesn't say uh, what they put between the two brackets here, strictly, etc. No problem, but it's not there. So now we have three prophets. They are children of one man. His name is Abraham. For sure, this is not what Christianity agree upon, and neither the Jews. But here the question is, if Allah is God who is against the Trinity, how come he choose from one man, three prophets, three sons in the same time? For who? Why we need the three prophets in the same time? So right away we will notice that the story focusing in three names first it was one man and then we have three names we have Ishmael we have Isaac and we have Jacob then we find that Abraham he worshiped three stars and by the way uh, we missed this one we don't want to miss this uh, chapter uh, 29 verse number 27 where Muhammad he did poo, -poo because he make it clear that yes the quran says that ishmael is a is a prophet isaac is a prophet jacob is a prophet which means three prophets but the quran confirm only from the children of isaac and jacob the prophethood And actually, that will be specifically Jacob. No prophethood will come from any other person, according to the Quran, only from Jacob. So Abraham was a prophet, Isaac was a prophet, Jacob was a prophet, but the children's will be the children of Jacob and they are going to be prophets 
Then after that, there's disconnection in the story. Suddenly, Jacob, his name became Israel, and nobody knows why. And the Muslim, they have no idea who is Israel unless they go and read in the old, you know, in the Old Testament to find out who is Jacob and how Jacob became Israel. If you ask the Muslim what Jacob means, they do not know. If you ask them what Isaac means, they do not know. If you ask them what Abraham means, they do not know. If you ask them what Israel means, they do not know because their prophet do not know. For he is a false prophet. If we go in the Quran to see more verses, you will notice with me the following. The Trinity of Abraham, surprising, was worshipping stars, not worshipping God. This is the story of Abraham, chapter 6. It says, So also we did show Abraham the power and the laws of the heaven and the earth, that he might, you know, understand. And look what happened to Abraham. Abraham looking for the Trinity. The Islamic Trinity. When the night covered him over, he saw the star. He said, this is my Lord. And you notice here, the Lord is written with the word L, capital letter, because this is exactly what he meant. He said, Hada Rabbi. Rabbi in Arabic means my God. Specifically, my God, not just my Lord. But when it said, he said, I love not those who said. Which is a very stupid argument because you worship the star because the star was there. You refuse to worship the star when the star, because the star disappeared. Well, Allah never appeared to you. So if the reason to reject something to believe in as God is to appear or not to appear, Allah never appeared to Abraham, never appeared to Muhammad, never appeared to Moses, never appeared to anyone. According to Islam. Not according to the Bible, by the way. Because we know that God came to Abraham as a man. So, this is how silly and stupid the story in the Quran that Abraham he worship a star says this is my God and then when the star disappear he said I'm not going to worship this God because he disappear and the Muslim they say to us well here Abraham he was a liar he was just being a scammer he was scamming those people who they believe in that so he wanted to show them a trick so he said, okay, I believe in your God. So he joined them and he took Shahada. He said, this is my God, Takbir. And then he don't believe really. He was saying that, but he don't believe. This is what the Muslim trying to explain to you. But look how evil this story is. That's mean in, in Islam, they have no problem if Abraham was a scam. He go between a group and he said to them, I believe in your God. But in fact, he don't believe in their God. And he takes Shahada, he converted to the religion. And later he said to them, ah, I don't like this God because he disappear. Are we following, guys? Are we following? I hope what I'm saying to you <clears throat> is not too much complicated. How silly is this debate? Imagine I join your religion. You, you are a person who believe in a star. And then I said to you, okay, I'm a Christian prince. I want to take Shahada. I want to convert your religion. This, this star is my God. Hey, I worship you, star. You are my Lord. And then after that, I say to you, you know what? This star is set. I'm not going to believe in it. As if those people, they never notice the star dis disappear. As if Abraham, he never saw that before. As if this is something Discovery Channel just just it's like uh, Abraham he sent a satellite and he discovered something nobody knows. Well, those people they knew the star does not appear at the time. And by the way, it's a stupid of you to say that I love not those who sit because the star never go anywhere. The star is there. 
you don't see it during the daytime because the sunlight will not make you able to see it. As simple as that. Then the drama continue. Abraham, after that, he saw the moon. So when he saw the moon rising in splendor, he said, this is my God. But when the moon set, he said, <laughs> unless my Lord guide me, I shall surely be amongst those who go astray. Hold on, hold on. There is something really stupid here. Didn't the Quran just say it, that Allah, he showed Abraham the guidance? So either we have to agree that the one who wrote the story is an idiot. He did not write the story in order. This is, should become later. Which means the story here, this verse here, should come at the end of what happened to Abraham, not in the beginning. But as we see, Allah, he showed Abraham the laws of the heaven and the earth. And then when Abraham, he saw the star, he converted to the star religion. How stupid that is. You just showed him the truth. And then he became a star worshiper. After he became a star worshiper, he became a moon worshiper. And then he left the moon for the same reason he left the star worshiping because he said, I don't like the one who said. As if Abraham, he never noticed that the moon does not stay in the sky always and it's set. And then Abraham, he noticed that there is something that's called the sun. Looked like he never saw it before. So when he saw the sun rising in splendor, he said, this is my God. This is Akbar. Here, here, you will notice the Muslim, they hide the, 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 the word is used, which is Akbar. Akbar is not the greatest. I know that one day, uh, one of the Christians, without saying his name, I think you know his name, he said that Allah Akbar means God is great, which is very stupid to say, and I have to school him and make a video about it. Akbar, and the sun. You see, in the time of Muhammad and before Muhammad, there is two major gods who they are taking over all the territories in the Middle East and even in Europe. The sun and the moon. Usually, those who live in the desert, they don't like the God, which is the sun, because the sun kill their animals, kill their grass, kill you know, destroy their water, and bring death. The moon is kind, is nice, is uh, is uh, is beautiful. It is uh, you know, they, they live in the desert, as simple as that. The the moon never bring harm. So usually, those who live in Arabia, they worship the moon. And there are some people who worship the sun. If you remember today, we mentioned that Allah, he have three daughters. But nobody asked himself, why Allah, he have three daughters for the Arab before Islam? How he have daughters? Who, the, the, the daughters, they gave birth from where? How? Who? You know what I mean? When, when, when somebody... He says to us that the, the, the Muslims, even the Quran confirmed that. You see, we are not making things up. That will show you the verses. The Quran confirmed that the Arab worship Allah, but the Allah they have is an Allah who have three daughters. Okay, where is those daughters are coming from? Who is their mother? Anyone knows? Who is the mother? Of the daughters of Allah. Who knows?
Nobody? Come on, one of you must be, no? Who is the mother of the daughters of Allah? The son. The son. They believed that the God of the moon married from the God of the sun and they have three daughters. As simple as that. And this is confirmed in the Quran. Allat, al Uzza, and Manat. You see here, we explained in the video before this one, that here you see it says seen lat and uzza. This is a false stupid translation. In Arabic, it doesn't say that. Allat and al uzza. And we explained to you. Let us change the translator. I mean, we have to jump between translators because you know, liars, what we can say. Look, this guy here, he wrote it to us as it is. Do you see the word L? Do you see L? Like one of you previously, he said to me, what is the proof that the word A-L mean God? It's in front of you. Uzzah is goddess. Lat is a goddess. And you notice here how L, Lat is separated, correct? It's not one word. Al Uzza Al Lat Al Lah Allah. I think now it's clear, right? So Al is a word meaning God. So God Lat, God Al Uzza, and God Manat the third. Hold on. We are striked with the word the Trinity again. The Arabian, they have gods who have six together and they have three daughters. God Al-Lat, God Al-Uzza, and God Manat. The reason the Muslims, they try always not to talk much about Lat and uzza and not only that, by the way. Muhammad, he believed that the three daughters of Allah are real. They are real. They are not pagan. Let me see if I can grab some reference for you. <coughs> they are real. <coughs> Please invite your friends. Not many people expecting me to be on air because we were for many hours. Uh, let us see. I'm I'm trying to find. A reference for you in English, not in Arabic. All right. I found it actually in English, but I'm trying to find it. Um, in official Islamic website, but I found it already. Um, okay, let's see this one. All right. Look like this one will do the job. <clears throat> You know, I hate to, sh to to speak about something without showing the proofs of what we speak of. But you know, Muslims will say, okay, he's making things up. Khalid ibn al-Walid. This is a Muslim website, abdurrahman.org. I just search in Google, I get it. And don't ask me, this is not my website, this is your Muslim website. 
Khalid ibn, ibn Walid, which is supposed to be one of the cousins of Muhammad. You know, when we say cousin, doesn't mean like cousin, cousin. You know, the, um, it's one tribe. He, he, he uh, the Prophet of Allah, he sent him to go and kill Al Uzza. To kill what? Al Uzza. And they are quoting for us here in English from Tafsir ibn Kathir. So Muhammad and the Muslims claim that Al Uzza, the daughter of Allah, was real. And she was a woman with dark skin. Again, here we go. She is black. When Allah Messenger conquered Mecca, he sent Khaled ibn Walid to the area of Nakhla, where the idol of Al Uzza was uh, 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 erected. On three trees, here we go again. Three trees. Khalid he cut out the trees, the three trees, and approached the house, built around it, and destroyed. When he went back, the prophet to the prophet, he informed him of the story of what he did. Muhammad he said to him, "Go back." Finish your mission for you have not finished it. Really, what is that? Khalid he went back, and when he get a closer where he was, where also it is servants of Al Uzza, they saw him. They start invoking by calling Al Uzza. When Khalid in you know uh, approach it, he found a naked woman. Whose hair was untidy, and who was throwing sand on her, on her head. Then Khalid bin Walid he killed her with a sword, and he went back to the messenger of Allah, who and he said to him that I killed her. And this is the story, but actually here the story is not in full. Uh, <clears throat> let us do this. I am not satisfied. <laughs> oh, there's no screen. Sorry, guys. I'm I'm really sorry. Hold on, hold on, hold on. It's my it's my fault. You see, sometimes. Oh boy. Hold on, hold on. It's all right. You will lose nothing. We have the time. I'm here with you. We repeat again and again and again. No problem. All right. Okay, we go to chapter 53, verse number 19. I will put the screen soon. Hold, give me a second. <clears throat> okay. Hear the story of Al Uzza, Al Lat, and Al Uzza. You will see that the Uzza is exist, and you know, uh, even Al Uzza, they claim that the name Al Uzza is coming from the name of Allah, which is Al Aziz. So there was a three trees, which the idolater place, uh, uh, like you know, their sacrifice or etc., and they have curtain in the area of Nakhla. Nakhla in Arabic means the tree, the palm tree, between Mecca and Al Taif. The Quraysh revered Al Uzza during the Battle of Uhud. Abu Sufyan said, We have Al Uzza, but you have, you don't have Al Uzza. We have Al Uzza on our side, but you don't have Al Uzza. All right. Then he says, Manat was another idol of the area. All right. And they are telling you where it was located. Then he continue here. 
speaking about how Muhammad he killed the daughters of Allah if you read here with me they said that when the messenger of Allah conquered Mecca he sent Khalid bin Walid to the area of Nakhla where al idol Al-Uzza was erected on the three trees of the of a forest Khalid cut the trees and approached the house built around it and destroyed it. then when he went back to the Prophet he informed him of the story and the Prophet said to him go back you did not finish your mission your finish your mission is not finished yet so Khalid he went back and he found there the servants of Al-Uzza people who serve Al-Uzza and when he approached it he found a naked woman whose hair was untidy and who was throwing sands on her head Khalid killed her with his sword and went back to the messenger of Allah and who he, who he said to and he said to him that is Al-Uzza <laughs> So look how Muhammad he made a big poopoo. Muhammad he just confirmed that Al Uzza is a truly a goddess which is exist. Do you see it? When Muhammad he said that this is Al Uzza, that means Al Uzza is something true. And Muhammad he claimed that he just killed the daughter of Allah. So how the Arab are pagan, yet Muhammad he believed that Uzza was truly the daughter of Allah, and he just killed her. Because either Al Uzza is a false goddess, is not exist, it's a fiction. Because remember, Al Uzza, it's not something uh, Muhammad he was the Muslim worship in the time of Muhammad. They worship him for centuries and centuries and centuries. So are you saying to me that this woman was alive for centuries and centuries and centuries and you are the one who killed her? Do you see guys the stupidity? So Muhammad, he is confirming here that he believed that Al-Uzza is a true goddess. Or what he is saying, I killed her. And here we will notice, by the way, the translation is not true because this is a dark-skinned woman and they, they make her dark because supposedly she is evil. Because in Islam, if you are black, you are evil. This is, this is how disgusting this religion is. It's a religion based on racism. This is why Muhammad, he said in the Hadith, if you see any pure black animal, kill him. Any pure black animal, kill him. In different place, Muhammad, he confirmed. Let us see if we can find some reference. Just for the benefit of the Abdul. Because the Abdul always, they lie to us, then they say, Islam is not racist, it's not religion of, uh, you know, <clears throat> This is the book of Kitab al-Shafa bi-ta'arifi huquq al-Mustafa. The book of healing. Shafa here, not healing, reading. It's like, you know, the Quran says that when you kill them, Allah will heal that chest of the believer. It's a kind of hateful healing. To, to recognize the right of Muhammad. And Mustafa is one of the names of Muhammad. Look what it says here. قال أحمد بن أبي سليمان صاحب سحنون من قال أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أسود كلهم
anyone he said that Muhammad is a black kill him he's not the one saying that by the way he's saying this is the order of Islam man qala man qala whoever says that the prophet of Allah is a black shall be killed just for saying the prophet is a black and as you see Muslims this is your reference this is page number 543 and I challenge you to say it's not true by the way we can show you the same reference from different books not necessarily from this one this is a different book it's called actually this is the same book hold on let us see here we go. Fath al al Malik al Maabud, Takmir al Manh al Maad, etc. Blah 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 blah. Okay. Fath al Bari fi Sharh Sahih al Bukhari. Let us see. Yeah, I don't see the reference here but anyway the one we showed you is enough if we go if we go right now and we can go to to the hadith you know just to you know confirm Muhammad he said it clearly kill every pure black animal the messenger of Allah says kill every one of them is all black do you see it Obviously, this man he have a mental issue and he is obsessed with hatred to the black color. So you should kill any animal who is a pure black, not only dogs, by the way. That's what Bahim is for all animals. Read with me uh, carefully. You see all those, you know. Here, by the way, it doesn't say black dog. This is a false translation. It says, kill every one of it is black, totally black, jet black. The word dog does not exist. This is between two brackets. Uh, <clears throat> in, different, in different hadith, Muhammad, they ask him, why you want to kill all the black dogs? He said, the black dog is the devil. A person, a Muslim, is asking the narrator, the companion of Allah Messenger, and he said to him, Did you ask the Prophet why we should kill the black dog? What what this what distinguished the black dog from the rest? So he said to him, What feature is in the black dog which distinguish distinguish it from the red dog and yellow dog like why why we should kill it he said oh son of my brother i ask the messenger of allah the same as you ask me which means the same question what distinguish it he said the black dog is a devil <clears throat> so while while hijab is in africa trying to preach to the African about the amazing Islam why you don't quote for them that the Prophet said anyone is a pure black kill him why you don't show them your Prophet saying that the black dog is the devil I am sure the African they will like it and they will enjoy it very much not only that Muhammad he claimed that the devil himself is a black and the devil who will come to destroy the Kaaba
is African. Let's see if we can get it for you. Let us see. You see, sometimes the search engine here is not good. Even I know the hadith word by word, but still, here we go. Hold on, let me see. Okay. Let us see. Here we go. You see the Muslims here. They will not explain to you and they will not give you a correct translation. What is the hadith here? What happened? The hadith is gone. The above hadith is mentioned in the authority of Abu Hayyar. Where is the above hadith? Where is the hadith? There is no hadith. It's gone. The hadith here in Arabic. يُخَرِّبُ الْكَعْبَ ذُو السُّوَيْقَتَيْنِ مِنَ الْحَبَشَةِ The one who will destroy the Kaaba is an Ethiopian man, which means he's a black man, and he is he is making fun of his, his, his shape. He has thin legs, an African who has thin legs, and supposedly this is the devil. Uh, look at this translation here. It would be an Abyssinian having two small shank who would destroy the house of Allah, the exalted, the, the glorious. Who is this guy? He is the devil. The prophet said, literally one of the two legs, lean legs, from Ethiopia will demolish the Kaaba. You see it? Why? Why Muhammad describing the shaitan who will destroy the Kaaba as an Ethiopian person? Why the angel Jibreel is white? Why the black stone was white but sin made it black? Sin made the black stone black, which means you commit sin, you get black. The color of dignity in Islam, holiness in Islam, is to be white. The color of you being evil is being black, and this is what Muhammad is trying to teach us. The black stone was totally white. <clears throat> Let's get the hadith. Here we go. The messenger of Allah said that the black stone descended from paradise and it was more white than milk. Then it was blackened by the sin of the children of Adam. And this is a clear evidence that Muhammad believed that the reason that black people are black, it's because they commit an extreme sin. So Allah, he black in them, which is a very clear racism and disgusting teaching. 
actually Muhammad he made it more clear look like we are going out of our topic but it's okay for a second Muhammad he made it clear that Allah created the black people from the left shoulder of Adam let's see if we can get the hadith all right just to finish this topic and go back to the Trinity all the messenger said Allah created Adam when he created him and he struck his right shoulder and there emitted from the white of spring as if it were white ants he struck his left shoulder and there were there emitted from his uh, 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 from it from it as a black of spring as if they were circle then he said to the one who they are from the right shoulder to paradise and I don't mind and then he said to those who they are emitted from the left shoulder to hell and I don't mind do we need more clear evidence that Islam is a very racist religion and yet the Abdul they are going to Ghana trying to convert people to Islam <laughs> In case you do not know, even you cannot go to the heaven of Islam without being a white person. Everyone will enter heaven. If you remember a few days ago, we asked a Muslim, why Allah will make all those who believe white? He said, okay, there's a matter, you know, you are black, Allah will make you white. But this, no, this is not a question. The question, why? Why I cannot enter heaven as a black person? I was, I was created. I'm a black. I like to be black. Why I need to be changed into white? This is the question. No, you are not allowed to enter heaven as a black. Allah have to change your color and make you white. Now we go back to the Trinity. <clears throat> When Muhammad he confirmed that he killed Al Uzza, he missed something important. What happened to Manat and what happened to Alat? Are they still free? <laughs> Remember when Muhammad he sent this guy Khalid bin Walid and he told him to finish the mission to assassinate Al Uzza. Hmm? After he killed her, that woman, he said that was Al Uzza. It's a woman who have a dark skin, and Muhammad he killed her, and this is the daughter of Allah. Hmm? Now we go back to Abraham's story. So as you see, Abraham, he worshipped three gods. The reason we went there to talk about those goddesses because Abraham, he worshipped three gods. Allah, he have three daughters. And those three daughters, they are nothing but stars and idols in the same time. The moon god have sex with the sun god, and they have three babies. All of them, they are females. Abraham, he worshipped three babies. Baby number one was a star. Baby number two was the moon. Baby number three was the sun. As you see in chapter 6, verse number 76, 77, and 78. 
So when a Muslim he speak about the oneness of God, and he say to us, "Was Abraham a believer in the Trinity?" Our answer in Islam, Abraham was a believer in the three gods, the moon, the star, and the sun. And the proof is in the front of you. Abraham in the Bible, do he believe in the Trinity? Absolutely. For Abraham, he knew that God is a spirit. He knew that God came to him as a man. And he knew that God is our Father in heaven. You see, if you go to the book of Genesis, let's go to Genesis 1. Immediately, you will find God, he presents himself as God and the Spirit. And remember, the God of Islam is not spirit. The God of Islam is not spirit. So what is the God of Islam? He is a body, as Muslims describe him. He is a physical being. Who have no spirit. Which make him dead body. Our God, and this is the proof that our God have nothing to do with the God of Islam. And the God of Abraham have nothing to do with the God of the Abdul. If we go to Genesis, we will find the following. <clears throat> In the beginning of the creation, this is the beginning, how God created everything. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was in the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the water. So the first verse in the Bible, the most time they keep saying to us, where is the Father, where is the Son, where is the Holy Spirit? The first verse in the Bible speaks that there is God and there is a Spirit. Muslims, they are people who they copy paste. If we go to the same book, the same book, the book of Genesis, chapter 18, we will find that God came to Abraham as a man. Let us go there. God, he came to Abraham as a man. And you know, the Muslims, they like they like certain translation, by the way. <clears throat> they think they can beat us with the translations. Which translation you like me to read it from? <laughs> Which one you like more? <clears throat> hmm? Funny people. God, he appeared to Abraham as a man. And you say to me, what is the God of Abraham and what Abraham believed in? Abraham believed that God is in heaven. God, in the same time, he is a spirit. God, in the same time, came to him as a man. And this is what Jesus said. Before Abraham, I am. Where Jesus, he come with this uh, claim that before Abraham, I am. From this story in front of us. He came to Abraham, as it shows us in Genesis chapter 18, verse number 1. In the book of John, <clears throat> when the Jews, they ask Jesus, they said to, to him, how you say that Abraham, he saw my day? I mean, how, how this happened? What do you mean, Abraham, he saw your day? You are not even 50 years old. How Abraham saw that day? This is impossible. 
in order to say that Abraham is like me saying now to you that between me and Abraham there's a couple of thousand of years but yet Abraham he saw me I was in his time so either you have to say I'm a crazy or you have to say that this person is saying that he is God for he is exist always Listen carefully what Jesus said. John 8. Jesus went unto the Mount of Olives, and early in the morning he came again into the temple, and all the people came unto him, and he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they said unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses and the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? This they said, tempting him, that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down, and with his finger wrote on the ground, as though he heard them not. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, I will move a little bit, so we can go where Jesus speak about himself before Abraham I am. Ye believe me not. Which of you convinceth me of sin? And if I say the truth, which of you can convince me of sin? Have you ever heard of a human who didn't have sin? <laughs> Imagine I challenge you, challenge you, that who dare of you to say to me, I am a sinner? <laughs> that would be the joke of the century. For every human being is a sinner, right? Jesus is challenging them, saying, Who of you can convince me of sin? None. And listen carefully. Why do ye not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, Say we not well that thou art a Samaritan and hast a devil? Jesus answered, I have not a devil, but I honor my father, and ye do dishonor me. And I seek not mine own glory. There is one that seeketh and judgeth. Verily, verily, I say unto you, if a man keep my saying, he shall never see death. If a man keep my saying, my saying is promising us that you will never see death. Does that mean we will not die? No, we will die. The death he's talking about is eternal life. Listen carefully. Then said the Jews unto him, now we know that thou hast a devil. Abraham is dead, and the prophets. And thou sayest, If a man keep my saying, he shall never taste of death. Art thou greater than our father Abraham, which is dead, and the prophets are dead? Who makest thou thyself? Hold on. Jesus. Look at this. They are, you know, the, the, he just said to them, If you believe in me, you will never face death. So those people, they thought, Oh, oh. This person saying to us, we will not die. Even Abraham, he died. The prophet, they die. They could not understand the deep teaching of Jesus. For they are taking the words out of the surface. This person is promising us we will not die. But Abraham, he died. The prophets, they die. Let us continue. Abraham, which is dead, and the prophets are dead, who makest thou thyself? Jesus answered, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my Father that honoreth me, of whom ye say that he is your God. Yet ye have not known him, but I know him. And if I should say I know him not, I shall be a liar like unto you. But I know him and keep his saying. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. Then took they up stones to cast at him, but Jesus hid himself. <laughs> and the Muslim, they say to us, Did Abraham believe in the Trinity? <laughs> so we showed you, from the Old Testament and we showed you from the New Testament 
how both they confirm each other that in the Old Testament Genesis 18 verse number one and the story is there written speaking about God coming to Abraham and in John chapter 8 verse number 48 all the way to 59 you can read the story you see how Jesus saying to them that yes Abraham he saw my day and he rejoiced and yet Abdul he want to say to you where in the Bible is teaching about the Trinity the Trinity like one one of the funny things uh, this kid Muhammad hijab he asked uh, <clears throat> uh, David Wood uh, he said to him in the first name for me name for me the father the the church father <laughs> Name for me the church father in the early 300 years before the Christians they meet together and they make the council of Nikki uh, like the, the and the, the emperor Name for me one who believe in the Trinity there is a huge list and the funny If this person he did read any book, just search where the word Trinity is coming from, and you will know how the church father they believe in the Trinity. Early church father who believe in the Trinity. How many they are? Many. Starting, by the way, from the disciple of Jesus, because those are the earliest fathers of the church so it's very stupid to say show me one one of the early fathers believe in the Trinity isn't it isn't it all over isn't it uh, John isn't it Luke isn't it Mark isn't it uh, 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 even Paul isn't it all of them they are the early church father how early we can go However, we can go a lot with more details about the names. Um, let me see if I can find you. Let us see. Give me a second. Hmm. Hmm. Let us see. I made a video actually about it before but you know actually I do not need to go I mean there is there is tons of uh, just search in Google to take you two seconds you can find tons of reference about the early church father with all the names endless names of early Christians believers including those who they are disciple of the disciples including those who they are disciples of the disciples To make the story short when the Muslims they speak about Trinity and they challenge you about the Trinity they are the first ones who believe in the Trinity because everything in Islam is based on the Trinity the God of Allah is 99 names or the names of Allah 99 names the Quran starts in every verse with the three names 
Allah Ar Rahman Ar Rahim. If I go to the hadith now and I type the word a tree, I will find that Muhammad he do nothing in his life without the word three. Look at look what I would do in front of you. Three times. Just I would type that. <laughs> I just will type that. Do you see what I'm seeing? Let me zoom more so you can see. I just typed the word three times. Nothing more, nothing less. Everything Muhammad he do in his day, in his from his morning until his night is a three time. Everything non-stop. Even when he say assalamu alaikum, he say it three times. Even when he shake hands, he say it three times. Even when he kiss a man, he kiss him three times. Everything in this cult is a three time. And yet they are trying to prove to you that you are following the wrong belief. You see it? Three time, three time, three time, three time. All of this, three time. Even when Muhammad, he is going, even when he go to the bathroom, <laughs> he have to shake his penis three times. <laughs> even when he report a story. As an example, Muhammad, uh, uh, Adam was debating Moses. He repeat that Adam, he won the debate three times. And the praise Allah 33 times. If any extols Allah after every prayer 33 times and praise Allah 33 times and declare his greatest 33 times, <laughs> oh boy, what is the 33? Even Jesus in Islam, he lived in earth 33 years. And this is where Muhammad is getting this from. Early Christians, specifically monks, they used to have what it's called today a rosary. And in this rosary, there's a three, 33 stones. 30 stones in the circle and three stones in the top. The total is 33 stone and they recite the prayer 33 time Muhammad is trying to copy the Bible of the Christians about the Trinity and he's trying to copy the Christians who they do things not because you know like this is not really it's not biblical here like to say the prayer 33 time but this is what they do they don't want to be disturbed by somebody around them or they don't want to they, they want to they want to worship god those people they their belief is to just to worship god they don't want to do or disturb by all kind of human being activities so 33 times and then you will find yourself after saying that 33 time three time that became what that became 99 times and guess what Allah have names which is 99 names and guess what Muhammad he have names which is 99 names and Muhammad is saying if you say that Allah forgive your sin Who is the one who believe in the Trinity? <clears throat> when Muhammad even he drink, he have to breathe three times. <sighs> Why? What's, what's wrong with this guy? <clears throat> He 
he don't even suck the drink want to drink he suck it three time like if you give him a glass of water he have to drink from it three time why Read with me, read, read. Everything is three times. Do you see it? Everything in this cult is a three time. And the challenge is for the Abdul is the following. Why three time is the only way for you to be ready to to face Allah in the prayer? Why you have to say Allah name three time? Why you have to do action three time? Why you have to repeat things three time? Why if a man divorce his wife three time, it's a final divorce, which means the perfect divorce? Why perfection in Islam is based on number three? So you are fighting Trinity, but everything in your cult is about the Trinity. Muhammad, he said, whoever asks Allah, S-A-W-T, Mercedes-Benz, paradise three times. Paradise says, oh Allah, admit him into paradise. And who never seek refuge from the fire three times. The fire will say, Oh Allah, save him from the fire. Even the fire believe in the Trinity, even paradise, you know, like the paradise will not be activated unless we say this sentence three times. The paradise will go asleep, snoring. And then the paradise suddenly heard somebody saying, Three times. Oh Allah, I ask you to go paradise. Oh Allah, I ask you to go to paradise. Oh Allah, I ask you to go paradise. And the second the paradise, you complete the three words, the paradise right away start talking to Allah. Allah, please, 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 Allah, let him go to paradise. Allah, please. He just said it three times. He's a qualified Allah. Okay, please, 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 please. <laughs> So the Abdul are trying to fight the Trinity, but they have the most funny, stupid Trinity. Who in the world would believe in such a garbage? This is how prophet of God say, so I can go now and kill and rape and do whatever I want and just say, hey Allah, please take me to paradise three times. And then, look, look, look how stupid this story is. <clears throat> Guys, anyone notice with me what is what is a stupid in this story based in what in the front of us? Let us see who of you he have a very a special kind of reading. Who wanna tell me what he found there in a the mistake in this additional to what we said? Anyone? <laughs> No, forget about the Pharaoh can talk or not. Obviously, the Pharaoh of Islam can talk <laughs> and can sing too. Look with me. If Allah, if Muhammad saying that Allah told him that if you say, I seek to go to paradise three times, you are going to go to paradise anyway. So what's the point of saying this? Because now, because now look at this stupid thing look what muhammad he did anyone he say whoever seek refuge from the fire three times the fire say oh allah save him from fire so where he will go <laughs> where he will go now okay we save him from the fire where he will go Have you ever heard the stupid stories like this before? So now we save him from the fire. Where he will go? Hawaii, Disneyland, Orlando, Miami Beach. Where he will go? If you already said to him, whoever seek heaven 
paradise three times, you will go to paradise. Why you are saying to them, whoever asks refuge from the fire three times? What this is about? If there's, if there's a third option, stupidity. And then Muhammad, when he drink, not only he drink the, from the cup three time, he sniff or let us say no, he doesn't sniff. Sorry, he breathe into it like, like like Muhammad hijab, like uh, 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 you know. Read with me this. The Prophet SAW would breathe three time in the vessel. Any Muslim can tell us why? Was he a cat? Was he a rabbit? What does that mean? Why why you need to breathe three time in the vessel? What does that mean? Hmm? When Muhammad he go and say assalamu alaikum. Do you know that always he say assalamu alaikum three times? Assalamu alaikum. The Muslim they answer wa alaikum assalam. Muhammad he say again assalamu alaikum. The Muslim they answer wa alaikum assalam. Then Muhammad he say again assalamu alaikum. And the Muslim they say wa alaikum assalam. Man, come on. Are you going to stand the whole day in the door saying assalamu alaikum? There's an Arab guy from my country. The first time we have a movie theater in the country, he decided to go and see what's happening. By the time he finished saying Assalamu Alaikum and shaking hands with everybody, the movie was over. And that is Muhammad. Assalamu Alaikum. Wa Alaikum Assalam. Assalamu Alaikum. Wa Alaikum Assalam. Assalamu Alaikum. Wa Alaikum Assalam. Three times. I want you Muslim to practice that when you go to the movie. Muhammad is going to the movie. And people are watch, wait, waiting for Muhammad to finish saying Assalam Alaikum. The one the prophet said when one of you sees a vision which he dislike he must spit <laughs> if you don't know how to spit go go and learn from Muhammad hijab he should spit on his left <laughs> three times seek refuge in Allah from the devil three times what's wrong with this guy I can prevent shaitan from getting close to me by spitting in the left three times. What does that mean? I made the shaitan wet. <laughs> Have you ever heard more stupid stories from such a guy? Any man in the world? I mean, this is this is a pure stupidity. What do you mean three times? Why three times? What three times would do? Why we can fight shaitan only with the three times? Why? Hmm? <clears throat> the Messenger of Allah say when he bowed, Subhan Rabbuna Al Azim. Three times. When he betrayed, he said, Subhan Rabbuna Al Ala. Three times. <laughs> <coughs> and the story continues. Stupidity after stupidity after stupidity. And everything is a three time. Three time. Hmm? When a person he sneezes, look like we are going deep in, 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 in politics now. Because in politics, people this things a lot. Respond three times to your brother when he sneezes. Uh -huh. 
that's have to do let's see with the wisdom what is behind the wisdom and if he sneezes more than more often he has a cold in his head <laughs> Muhammad is a genius. He just noticed that if you sneeze more than three times, it means you have cold, obviously. <laughs> when a person he sneezes in Islam, you have to say, Allah. So, what Muhammad is saying to you, if your brother he sneezes three times, you keep saying to him, Allah. He sneezes second time, Allah. He sneezes the third time, Allah. If he sneezes four times, don't say anymore because obviously he have a cold. <laughs> All right. Madness and stupidity. Madness and stupidity. Hmm. As you see, everything around you is three times. Everything. So to make it simple, Muslims, when they challenge us, they have nothing to challenge. We can get them busted so easy, so fast, from our books and from their books. Islam is the most stupid religion. But Islam is hard to defeat if you do not know. And that's why the Muslims, they went to Ghana to debate Christians who do not know Islam. Because there they will not see someone like Christian Prince. But wait, Christian Prince, knowledge is coming to Ghana, my friend. And soon you will see what will happen in Ghana. People from around the world, they are listening and they are watching. I'm receiving messages from everywhere including Ghana, from Africa, from Indonesia, from actually the number two country, listen to me, is Indonesia. The second country from the majority of people who listen to me are Indonesian, in case you do not know Muslims. So things is not looking good for you. In a few years from now, you can see generations who can defeat Islam so easy? You know, when I start teaching in posting in YouTube, that this was a while ago, which the Muslims actually introduced me to. You know, the Muslims, they supposedly, when I exposed me, so they posted uh, uh, some pictures, they say, This is me. And I said to myself, Hmm, look like the Muslims are asking me to go there, as usual. <laughs> so I decided to go to YouTube. And then since then, the Muslims are sorry. <clears throat> The same as Paltok, the one who invited me to go to Paltok, it was the Muslim. The Muslim, they said to me, if you are a man, come and debate us in Paltok. I never heard of it before. I went there. Since then, they are so sorry that I went there. The Muslim, they challenged me. They said to me, if you are a scholar as you claim, how come you don't have books? We never heard that you have books. I said, ha ha. Look like I will not be a scholar for the Muslims unless I get Muhammad busted by writing. So let me make books. <laughs> Everything I did, it was because of the Muslims. It is the Muslims. They asked me to do what I do. Why you don't challenge Zakir Naik? I challenge Zakir Naik. And the potato, he ran away. He said to me, if you can bring 2,000 people with you, 2,000 people. I will bring 2,000 people with me. <laughs> Why? You want to debate me? Or you want to debate the 2,000? <clears throat> it's, a, it's a comedy drama. The Muslims, when they challenge us, they show us how weak they are, and they show us how strong we are. They can maybe good in making mockery, like what happened with David Wood. They tried to make fun of him because he was polite. He was being nice to them, which he should not be, right? I, you know, I don't agree the way he did the debate because when you debate someone like those, 
you cannot be polite. You should go and destroy everything they said in the stage. It was a perfect opportunity to destroy Islam. But for some reason, he did not take advantage of the stupidity of hijab. You know, hijab, he, may, he said everything, everything will make it perfect for David Wood to destroy him in the spot. He said, Allah, he pray for, not to. He said that there is not a single Jew for 4,000 years. 4,000 years. Show me. Silence me. <laughs> My friend, what set up, what not set up? I don't care for this. Set up what? Let the Muslim make set up for me. You are there and you are there to debate. So you debate. I don't go by all these excuses. Hijab is a certified donkey. He gave David Wood everything. Anyone want to debate about Islam, he needed. He said what it is enough, enough to destroy Islam from the beginning to the end. When, when this guy, he said, for 4,000 years, not a single Jew, not a single rabbi, worship another God, except what in, they are restricted firmly to worship. 4,000 years. And he repeat that three times. 4,000 years. Why David Wood did not ask him? So the Quran is lying then. And Muhammad must be a fake prophet because the Quran says that the Jews, they worship other gods. The Quran says that the Jews, they worship a guy, his name is Uzair. When a stupid Abdul, he said that for 4,000 years, not a single Jew believe in the Trinity or believing in other God. That means this guy, he just admitted that everything in the Quran is a lie. Chapter 9, verse number 30, it says clearly that the Jews, they say, Ezra, this, by the way, this is fast translation, there's no Ezra. It is Uzair. The Muslims are trying to find the name close to the Jews, but it does not say Ezra anywhere. And then not only that, in the verse after it confirmed that the Jews, they took their rabbi, as gods do you see it and the verse after it, it says that they've been ordered to worship only allah and the messiah the son of mary here in the translation is a fast translation by the way in arabic it says they took their monks their rabbi and their monks as gods instead of allah And the Messiah, the son of Mary. In the translation, they switch the word. They say they took their rabbis and their monks and the Messiah, the son of Mary, which is a false translation. <clears throat> this is why the Muslims, they debate certain people. If they believe that you are kind, if you are not going to be a person who will humiliate Islam, they will be fighting over debating you. How many times Shabir Ali he debated David Wood, and he will never have enough of debating him. Because it doesn't matter how many times you debate Shabir Ali, Shabir Ali never answer, and he will never answer. Which means David Wood is not able to corner Shabir Ali and get him busted. So Shabir Ali come to debate again and again and again because he learned, okay, what I will lose? Nothing. He say what he say, I say what I say, and we go home. And I will say to the Muslims, I see I am debating these Christians. You know, there's no risk. But when ABN TV, they offer Shabir Ali to debate me, he accepted. He bought my book. Less than five days after, he sent a message to ABN saying, I apologize. I'm busy with my PhD. And since then, he is busy. <laughs> since then, he is busy. <clears throat> Potatoes. And not only that, you notice that they want to debate you if you don't speak Arabic so they can make fun of you. The same what they did with David Wood. Uh -huh. I know this is coming. I know this is coming. You do not know Hebrew. You do not know Arabic. And supposedly, uh, uh, <laughs> hijab is expert in both, in Hebrew and in Arabic. <laughs> uh, <coughs> uh, 
Oh boy. Anyway, <clears throat> we are here for them, and I hope all the Christians are learning. And you holding degrees have nothing to do with your education. Don't ever think that you need a degree to to be uh, someone who knows. Degrees, actually, degrees. I find it is it's something stupid and looks smart. And let me explain to you. I never spoke to somebody have a degree. I have a degree myself, but I never spoke to someone he he have a degree. He think his degree educating him, and he don't look stupid for me. Because degrees is not really about being a person who is a professional in knowledge. It's about you being professional in one field. You concentrate in one thing, and then you, the whole study you do is about that thing. And then you go and you make a presentation, and you make a study, like 300 pages. You make a presentation, they ask you a question, you pass, you get the PhD, that's it. But this does not have nothing to do with knowledge. A person who knows the Bible very well, it's a person who knows the history, the language, every word there. So I cannot claim that me as Christian Prince, I am a scholar in the Bible. I can say, I can answer you, but I cannot say I am a scholar. Because the main key to be a scholar is to speak the languages of the Bible, which is Aramaic, Hebrew, and Greek. Not only one. You have to speak the three. Let us say, if you study one, that will make you a scholar in one. If you, if you speak two, and not necessarily if you speak, I'm saying speak and you learn, you educate yourself, you prove yourself. So education has nothing to do with degrees. Education is something you educate yourself. Degrees is a school pro prof profession. They give you a certificate to say you are qualified to be, let us say, uh, to work as an engineer. You know, okay, but engineer, he do not know the law. Engineer, he have nothing to do with medicine. Uh, a doctor, he have nothing to do with engineering. So you are limited in one field. So when you look at those people who have a PhD, as an example, James White, he have a PhD. I never saw someone, he says stupid things as much as Shabir Ali and James White. As an example, James White, who claimed to be a Christian minister, he said, whoever says ISIS is Islam is a liar. But Muhammad and ISIS, they are perfectly matched. So when you say Islam is not ISIS, you are saying that Muhammad never killed, never raped, never tortured, never put, never put nails in the eyes of people, never cut hands, never cut feet. Because this is what ISIS do. The logic of this idiot, he said to you, ISIS are killing Muslims, but Muhammad, he killed Muslims too. Ali, he killed Muslims. Abu Bakr, he killed Muslims. Omar, he killed Muslims. <laughs> because Muhammad, he put the rule. If you break any of my rule, I will kill you. So look at their stupidity. He got a PhD and he claimed that he is a doctor. A doctor, he should not make a decision or come to a conclusion without deep study. So when I say ISIS are not Islamic, then I need to see what ISIS did is not in Islam. And then I can come to the conclusion. If ISIS are not following Muhammad, then ISIS are not Islamic as simple as that. But if everything ISIS is doing is perfectly Islamic, then how you say ISIS are not Islamic. Are you getting my point, guys? So he defended Islam, claiming that ISIS are not Islamic. This is why the Muslim, they said to, to James White, they said to him, God bless you. We respect you. You know, because they found in him perfect, perfect liar who defend their cult. Yet, he is supposedly Christian. This is what Jesus said. They will come to you in a clothes of a sheep, but they are wolves. This is one within your church, deceiving your children, saying to you, Islam is not a cult. Islam is not violence. Islam is not ugly. Islam is not satanic.
Muhammad, he made it clear. Anyone he don't pray, I will kill him. Anyone who don't pay zakat, I will kill him. Anyone who don't even pray in the direction of my, 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 the Mecca, I will kill him. Even if you say shahada. Even the food you eat. Even the food you slaughter. If you don't slaughter as we slaughter. If you don't eat as we eat. If you don't pray as we pray. If you don't, if you don't face as we face, if you don't fast as we fast, I will kill you. Muhammad, he cut hands. Muhammad, he cut feet. The Quran says that. You see, what you say to me, Islam is not ISIS or ISIS is not Islam. That is a joke. The Quran says to torture. What do you do? What do you do when you cut when you got an enemy of Allah? You cut his fingertips. Not only you cut his neck, even you cut his fingers, you enjoy cutting his fingers. Do you see it? This is Quran, chapter 8, verse number 12. No, no, he is not converting to Islam. This guy, he have no religion. This guy is doing a business. He want to be, he want to stay safe. This way, you know, he will not be, you know, like he will not be a target for the Muslims. This is a safe business. As simple as that. <clears throat> as many people doing business. Business is good. All right. So cutting their necks, cutting their fingertips, not only that, cutting their hands, cutting their legs. Muhammad even he put nails after he hated them with the fire in the eyes of his enemies. So what ISIS did is not Islamic. Muhammad, he cut a woman two pieces when she is alive. She is 83 years old. Her name is Umm Qurfa. While she is alive. What is ISIS did is not Islamic. Crucifixion is Islamic. Cutting hands is Islamic. Cutting feet is Islamic. Putting nails in the eyes is Islamic. So why somebody want to lie to us and yet he claimed to be a Christian, he have a PhD, he says ISIS is not Islamic. There is a moderate Muslim. <clears throat> he decided to explain and to prove that ISIS are not Islamic. Look what he did. <clears throat> he wanted to prove this is in Arabic. He wanted to prove that ISIS are not Islamic by the following. He said, when ISIS, they enter a town, which is a Christian town in Syria, the town, the church is a Catholic church, and there is a statues of Mary, as many Catholic churches they have. So he said, if ISIS are Islamic, they should kill them all. But because they are not Islamic, they accept to make them pay jizya, because jizya only allowed for the Christians, but not, not for those who have a statues. This is a moderate Muslim. You see the moderate Muslim? A moderate Muslim is trying to prove to the Arab Muslims that ISIS are not Islamic. He said the proof, they did not kill all the Catholic. If they are true Muslims, they should kill them all. <laughs> this is the moderate Muslim. <clears throat> this is one This is one from the, from the white helmet, you know, the one who can uh, get more than 500 of them with their family, which means God knows how many, how many thousands. The stupid Canadian, they get them there. They are terrorists from Al-Qaeda. He was teaching the Muslims that all those Christians in that town should be killed. And he was saying they are not Islamic because according to Islam, we should kill them. Do we have any Abdul? <clears throat> Anyway, guys, I just I wanted to share with you. Same time, you know, for us, we don't we don't want to teach uh, what Muslims teach. 
for us, we don't want to have an impact of the hatred of Islam against us to make us hate Muslims. We should maintain us as a Christians. We should love everybody. And we should try our best to guide the Muslims to the truth. Don't call them name. Don't hate them. You know, I when I say somebody's stupid, I mean he's stupid. I, I'm not calling names. As simple as that. When I say to somebody, you are a liar, I mean what I say. I'm not calling him names. This is not name calling. If I am wearing clothes which is dirty, and you say to me your your clothes is dirty, you are not calling me names. Well, they are dirty. As simple as that. So we need to stay away from calling names. Jesus said <clears throat> to the you know to the Pharisees, he gave them many descriptions, but those are not names, really. He is describing them. If you are if you are of Abraham, you do the, the work of your father. Abraham, your father is the devil, as simple as that. He's not really giving names. He described what they live and what they are. So when I say to a Muslim, you are lying, I'm just saying to him, you are lying. You are a liar. You are a liar. I'm not calling him names. So we don't want to be involved in hate, and we don't support hate, and we should not support anyone teach hate. You see, if there is a Christian, he says, uh, we should do violence against Muslims. Don't listen to him, for this is far away from Christianity. Actually, if you see a Muslim and you need help, help him. Uh, uh, me, myself, actually, when I was in, uh, in Europe, I saw a Muslim woman in the bus. I gave her my chair, even though my trip was, 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 uh, was long. I was in, in, a, in a Frankfurt airport, <clears throat> and the woman, she came, Actually, I gave I gave the, the my place twice, once in the in the station, where was a lot of rain, and we are waiting for the bus, which will take us to a different city, um, and you cannot even wait inside the building. It's like there's no cover, so there's a small space where it's covered, and everybody is there. I was sitting there. I have my back in the front of me, and an old Muslim woman she came. And me, I know if I take if I stood up. My place is gone. That's it. And I will be standing in the rain. So I gave my place to this Muslim woman because for me, I see her the same as my mother. An old Muslim woman. She's an old woman. I mean, I mean, don't don't look at her as Muslim or a Christian or a Hindu or a Jew or who is. She is an old woman. And you as a Christian, you should be a Christian always. So if you see a Muslim... <clears throat> Be Christian, don't be a Muslim. Don't be a person who you know uh, uh, reflects something is not in you. Be the mirror of Christ on you. Be humble, be merciful, be nice, be kind, be helpful. At the same time, don't let anyone use you and abuse you. Like I know some people who open their houses. To Muslims and they take advantage of that. I heard a story of uh, of a, 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 a family from Holland. They opened their house to a Muslim from Afghanistan, and then he tried to rape their daughter. Just be smart. Use your common sense. Use your common sense. So you see somebody like you wanna in the bus. You see somebody in the street. You see an old woman. You see an old man. Be a good Christian, but in the same time, don't be stupid. So we as a Christian, the Bible says to us clearly that we have to love, not only love our neighbors, even, even the one who think we are his enemy. And for me, I don't want to believe that Muslims are my enemy. <clears throat> my enemy is the devil. As simple as that. I know that in Islam, you cannot, Muslims cannot have me as a friend. But if you ask me, do you like to have Muslims with our friends, to free friends for you? I say, sure, why not? Why I will not do that? What is the problem? The best way to bring them to Christ, actually, to friend them. But I know that because of their religion, they will not accept me as a friend, sadly.
so it's not because of me I don't want them but because they don't want me but that will not change me from inside I will stay a person who love everybody who believe in mercy who believe that the only solution for everything in the world is you know to be uh, you know the, the way God he wants you to be hate bring hate violence bring violence and that will not be a solution for anything you know and I say the same to the Muslims like okay we kill you you kill us and then when is going to end and then your children they will kill my children and my kids and my children they will kill your children. why why want to do that why want to do that let us debate about religion let us find out who is believing in the truth and let peacefully people decide where they want to go otherwise war is not for your benefit and here we go look at Islamic countries what they have what is the accomplishment Muslims they have in their countries you have nothing while people now they are they are they are controlling the space the Muslims are fighting over if it is halal to buy ice cream from Holland they're busy their mind is 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 freezing is it frozen in the searches many centuries ago while the American just two weeks ago we saw them they are going to to to, to, to they send a spaceship to Mars and they are landing there the Muslims are busy speaking about their prophet went in the top of a flying donkey to the seven heaven and the donkey don't have wings by the way <clears throat> when the world is going beyond technology the Muslims still talking about is it okay if I take the boogers and I put it in my pocket when I am in the mosque you watch Islamic TVs you will find all funny crazy questions and telling us that this the society is still beyond I mean I don't know what happened to them a woman she called the TV station and she say Assalamu alaikum <clears throat> and she have like a you know very fame voice I'm not going to say the voice because the voice is kind of uh, weird but she's speaking like uh, she is a horny woman Assalamu alaikum and the two guys in the TV station they start sweating and she starts saying to them she said how, how we can help you sister she said I am a beautiful woman and uh, my sister told me that each time I take off my clothes and by the way I have a very beautiful body each time I take off my clothes the fish they start shaking and you should see the shake guys you should see the shake they are sweating like <coughs> the guy he grabbed the water <coughs> he can't breathe I mean obviously they, she is doing it on purpose she is she is obviously uh, excuse me I don't want to say the word like that the, the one start with, with W you know because the way she is talking obviously she's making fun of them so her sister told her that each time she take off her clothes the fish they start shaking and by the way she have a very beautiful body and then the shake like he gathered himself together and he said uh, sister I advise you that you should not take off your clothes in the front of those fish tank because obviously they are a genie she said but this is the only room I have she's okay well uh, what about you cover the fish tank with a blanket so the genie the fish are masturbating the the Muslim girl she take off her clothes the genie they go crazy they start shaking you know the the the, the fish tank start boiling like the fish they go crazy like what like wow look at this man look at this unbelievable <laughs> and then he come with the advice okay what about you cover the fish tank with the blanket <laughs> this is what they are busy with this is Islamic TVs I wish you guys you speak Arabic I watch Islamic TV and Arabic just for fun just for comedy especially in the month of Ramadan you know 
if I show you in the internet right now, like I will be, I will be, uh, I will be shy to show you. Like there's a guy, he was asking about using his finger. Uh, forget about it. I'm not going to say where. <laughs> the questions is beyond stupidity. And this is why we want the Muslims to educate themselves, to wake up. This is have nothing to do with religion. What kind of religion is teaching you where to put your finger? What kind of religion is focusing on how, how many times you shake your, your penis? What kind of religion says to you that each time you say Allahu Akbar Shaitan, he fought? What kind of religion says to you before you enter the bathroom, you have to say a certain prayer, otherwise Shaitan is going to go inside your anus? Do you remember, guys, the guy in the in the in YouTube the video who explained how Satan fought? I'm not going to play the video. I wish I can play it, but let me let me remind you of the video. <coughs> this is the video. I will put it for you on the screen. This guy, if you watch the video, and I advise you to do, uh, the, the, the Muslim youth, they start laughing. They start laughing because it's stupid, it's crazy, you know? Shaitan, you go inside the bathroom, you think you are going to stay there for five minutes, but you stay there for 30 or 40 minutes because Shaitan go inside your bowels and he play with them. In other words, Shaitan, he go and he block your bowels and he, he he block your anus. He go inside. This is a teaching of God. And then the, the youth, they start laughing. And the guy, he said to them, this, this is the hadith says, the hadith says that, which means don't laugh at me. I'm not a stupid here. It's your prophet. He said that. The hadith says so. The hadith says so. And yet they want to debate us about if God is one or a trinity. I mean, go and focus in, in the madness you have. For us, if, if there is a trinity or not, still we believe in one God. For us, God is not God because he's a trinity or he is, he is not. For he, what he is, for he is glorious, for he is amazing. It's not because the numbers. What if somebody he have a, he believed that gods are one thousand gods, and then we find out that he's true, his belief is right. What that will change nothing. You believe in one God, but he teaches you all the stupid things. This is cannot be God. God don't speak stupid. God will not say stupid things like we see in the Quran. Seven sleepers. The story of the Pharaoh. Uh, uh, the story of uh, of uh, the, the you know tomorrow we we will do more podcast and we will see we will, we will take over those funny stupid stories one by one. This is the video for those who want to like to watch it. If you like to watch it, I just post the link for you. You can take a hike with the fart of <laughs> the 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 BHD of farting. <clears throat> The degree of farting. This is what you learn in Islamic school. You spend, you know, Al Khomeini. He made fun of the Muslim Sunni. He said to them, "You have a, a, a swelling knowledge in the in the in the. You have a library of what is under the belt." The Muslims. He makes he make fun of the Muslim Sunni. He says, "You have a huge library of what is under the belt, as if he is better." If you read the Shia books, they have a bigger library in what is under the belt. Yeah, this video, everything the guy he says there, it's from the Hadith. Muhammad, he said, that when you when you start praying, shaitan he start farting. He is not breaking anything from his pocket. Imagine, forgive me, Lord, for saying this. Imagine 
that the one who is saying such a thing, such a silly stuff like this, is Jesus. Imagine, who of us will believe in Jesus anymore? I will not believe in him right away. Correct? When we, when we say the word Christ, we speak of wisdom, which is extreme. When we say the word Muhammad, we say of his stupidity, which is extreme. Right and immediately. Can you find me one stupid thing Jesus said? All of us, we say stupid things from time to time. No problem. We do stupid things too. But Muhammad, he is consistent with his stupidity. Like this guy, he cannot live without doing something stupid every every time he talk. In the same time, when we read the teaching of Christ, we will find amazing wisdom beyond imagination. <clears throat> like when, when the blind man, he came to the house of Muhammad. And Muhammad, he ordered his wives to cover themselves. And the wives of Muhammad, when he ordered them to cover him, themselves, he said to them, they said to him, but is it is it is it he isn't he a blind man? Let us see if we can find the hadith. <coughs> I mean, what this hadith here? This is a very long one. Hold on. All right. So he ordered his wives to cover themselves. But the wives they were like, what? Like what? What do you mean cover ourselves? Why would I cover ourselves? The guy is a blind. So I was with the messenger of Allah while Maimuna was with him, the wives of Muhammad. Then Ibn Ammu Maktoum came, and this happened when we were ordered to observe veil. The Prophet said, observe veil, observe veil from him, specifically from him. We ask him, oh, Oh, Messenger of Allah, isn't he blind? <laughs> Muhammad here, he got busted. He just told them to observe veil, and he knew that he is a blind, and then all of them, they knew he is a blind. So what do you mean? He's being stupid. So now Muhammad, after he got busted, what he would do? Look what he said. They said to him, isn't he blind, and he cannot neither, he can neither see us nor recognize us? The Prophet said, are you both blind too? Didn't you see him? <laughs> but as we know, Muslim women are allowed to see men. It's okay. You can see men. You can. Don't Muslim women walk in the street and their eyes is open? The man is not naked. The man is not wearing a bikini. And he is a blind man. But when his wives, they get him busted with his stupidity because he ordered them to observe veil. And they said to him, but he's blind. They like, come on. Muhammad, he was consistent with his stupidity. He insists, oh, oh, okay, he's a blind, but are you blind? Huh? Are you blind? If we ask any Muslim, do Muslim women, are they allowed to see men? They will say yes. So what your prophet here is saying? Based on this, women, they should not allow to see men ever in their life. Based on this, women, they cannot go in the street. Because obviously you cannot use your eyes in the street based on this. No, no, this is not about jealousy. This is about stupidity. As I said, he is he's very consistent with his stupidity. Very, very consistent. All right? You know, guys, there is there is my uh, my page in Minds.com. I noticed not many of you did subscribe there. I want to ask you, if you don't mind, 
to subscribe because this is our always our backup page let me post for you minds.com because everything can disappear you never know channels in youtube can disappear even better you never know all right so uh this is my page in face in in uh, in uh, in minds i will post it for you if you don't mind please subscribe and tell your friends about it because facebook can go this this uh, minds that come they are it's owned by conservative uh website people so you know they grant they guarantee people to, to freedom so subscribe we don't have many people here there i don't know why like i mean i have tens of thousands of people subscribe to my channel but instead in minds very few people maybe it's my fault because i did not uh, speak about it all right yeah it's safe it's safe last time i went there nothing happened to me <laughs> come on man it is safe <laughs> Yeah, it is safe. It's just, actually it's a it's a combine of Facebook and Twitter. So it's like a software which have uh, uh, Facebook and Twitter. The difference is that here they will not chase you for saying something. They are not practically correct. This is the purpose of this website, and this it's a huge website by the way. It's not like uh, uh, something tiny, small. People they started today. You know they have. You know it's a big, big, huge website. Uh, <clears throat> All right, I think we have enough for today, and uh, I hope we answer the Muslims. And I hope that you, Muslim, you Christians, you learned where it says subscribe. Well, there when you go, you see in the page. First, you have to log in. You have to make an account, and you can you can make an account. You can log uh, with Google, I think, or anything. Uh, you have to log in, and then you go down, and here you can subscribe. You see here, so for me and my page, because I'm logging in, I can subscribe to myself. That's why it doesn't appear. But for you, it's going to show an option to subscribe. All right. <clears throat> yeah, you can join. And by the way, I advise you to have your page too. I mean, have your place. Why not? It's free. It's a free as a free, which means no cost, and it's a free as they are not they are they are not perfectly correct. Just be sure you don't you just you don't you know don't uh, don't teach hate, uh, don't uh, post something violent. You know, do what is right. You know, use your common sense, and it's good. Uh, you know, there's many people. They are. Uh, it's not really new. There's many people. They are trying to beat Facebook. Actually, those people they are dreaming. To beat Facebook one day, Facebook one day, they, they they are hoping maybe that Facebook one day will collapse and they will take over, and they are getting bigger and bigger. All right. <clears throat> yeah. It's not Facebook exactly, as I said. It's a company like it's a, you, you can post videos, um, you can post links, you can post anything. It's like Twitter and Facebook and the same. You just try it, check it out. Just check it out. You will lose nothing. Now, how many of you do video uh, editing? <clears throat> how many of you do video editing? Okay, I posted in my page in Patreon a software which is very powerful for video editing. You can go and check it out there and you can download. It's for free, legally for free. It's not like something, it's not like hacked. I, I will never do that. And I will never give you something to, to, to be not legal. So uh, based on the company itself, it's uh, for free. And I downloaded it myself and I found it unbelievable how powerful it is and it's absolutely for free all right <clears throat> so click and click in the in Patreon and get check it out and get it um, the, the the text uh, you know processing the uh, the video processing is beyond imagination I never saw a software like this before actually 
uh, before I was using, uh, you know, like I, I paid, I spent a lot of money for software. After I saw this one, I noticed how stupid those softwares are. All right. Yeah. The name of the software, hold on. Let me give you the, 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 the page. <clears throat> All right. The name of the software. All right. Here we go. You will see it now in my screen. It's called the Finchy. resolve 15 when you click at the link in my page in battle you let me pause for you so you can go there you click and you download actually maybe i should make a video about it to show people how how to use this it's really beautiful it's very nice and the good thing after all it's for free which means you pay nothing so when you click at the link there uh there's two options to download. Download, don't download the one is a studio because the studio is not for free. Download only the Finchy uh, Resolve 15, not the studio. All right. And it's for free, cost you zero. So for those who need it, go and get it and maybe tomorrow i will make a video about it so we can help more people to know for free i mean you know many people they spend too much money for those stuff uh, let us help others to find a better way how is your roof coming along no i fixed that roof a while ago otherwise i will be <laughs> yeah i fixed it it took me like a week to fix it you know because i'm doing it alone you know what i mean and if you want to hire a company, they are very expensive. And that's what happened when you are not rich, what you can do. Yeah. Anyway, God is good, my friend. God is good. You see, God is good and always God, he provides you with your needs. I never been, I am a person who never been worried about tomorrow. And always God, he bring good tomorrow for me. Even when I go in the airport, even when I go overseas, or even wherever I go, you will not believe it. I remember I want to buy something from the pharmacy. The pharmacy is in front of me. <laughs> I remember, like, I, you will not believe it. You know, I go I go places sometimes. Nobody can explain things how they happen to me. I believe the Lord always is, is, is taking care. And uh, he sent me good people in my way. If you see people who contact me and they are offering me to help or, like, or to translate, you will not believe it. I mean, people, they are doing an amazing job. And I believe that God he is sending them. It's not, it's not you who came to me. It's not me who came to you. It is God he is putting us together. So God is good. And when you follow the God of good, he will send you the good one. Same time, you know, you have to be careful. You have to be smart. You have to be vigilant. You have, as the Bible says, just follow as the, as the book teach us to be. Uh, each time and each day in my life is a new experience and somehow and i don't know how it work always i meet amazing people if you remember when i speak first time spoke a first time about translating my uh translating my books a guy who's an atheist, he sent me a message in Facebook. He said, why your God don't send you somebody to translate your books? I, I forgot how he texted me in Skype or Facebook I, or email. I forgot. Anyway, so he said to me, I remember very well. He said to me, why your God? He, you keep saying God is good, God, etc. Okay, here we go. Today you mentioned just in the video, in the live broadcast, why your God he don't hear you and send you someone to translate your book? I saw his text. I answered him. I said, I'm not worried about my God providing me. The Bible says, don't test your God, etc. 
I went and I opened my email and I found a gentleman is offering me to translate my book to German. And the email arrived just in the same time when the guy was challenging me and saying to me, why your God don't send you somebody to translate your book? Actually, it was not the German. It was, I think, uh, maybe the Dutch. The Dutch, the the Holland, the, you know, yeah. I forgot because because we have many translations. So anyway, like he's challenging me. Okay, where's your God? Here we go. Where's your God? They are asking you. Do you have your book in uh, in this language? You say no. But if we have somebody translate, I will be happy. So why your God don't send you somebody? Right. And God, he always sent us people who do the good work. And now we have the book translated in German, in Dutch, in French, uh, in Swedish. And now there is a gentleman is working in the Polish translation. And we have the, the in, in the Malay language. Already is done. I'm working in it. Uh, I'm working just in the Arabic text to be sure that is going to appear perfectly in Kindle. Um, and there is there is a there is another uh, person who is working in the Spanish translation. All of them they are volunteer. You see how God is good. God is good. You download the one which is it says as you see in the screen Da Vinci Resolve fifteen, not the studio. Not the studio. Don't download the studio. The studio is not for free. The, uh, the Resolve 15 is for free. All right? Yeah. Just have a good heart, and the Lord, he will send you the good heart like you. If you are evil, you will get evil. You know? As simple as that. Wish other good, you will receive good. And you know, wherever I go, like uh, I went in Europe, I went wherever people go, people receive me as a very beautiful way. And you know, like what I do is very dangerous, right? I never worry. I never ever worry. Worry is the last thing you see. People they think I am not showing my face because I'm worried or afraid. Of, I don't care. You have no idea who I am. I am the last one to worry about any from anything, especially when it's come to danger. I don't show myself because I feel comfortable. Like now I can be sitting with my short and talking to you. I don't like to be in TV. I'm not looking for being famous. I don't want to people to glorify me. You do not know who I am. You just know somebody, his name is a Christian prince. You see me in the street, you will not even recognize me. All those things which people, they worship to be famous. Actually, one of the reasons I did not get, like let us say, too much popular because I don't show myself and I know that many of those who you watch their videos and they got a huge number of followers simply because they show themselves in the in the video I don't want that I don't care how many people they follow me and I, when I say follow me I mean my videos and to learn from them I'm no one to be followed and I don't care if it's one or two or five hundred or fifty thousand or five million I do my best and I leave it to the Lord. I do my duty. The Lord, he said, when you give with the right hand, don't let the other hand know what you gave. So you do not know me. You do not know who is a Christian prince. That for me is a blessing. Nothing more, nothing less. <clears throat> but anyway, uh, you cannot hide yourself because when you go and you talk, people they recognize you from your voice. I remember when I was in the Philippines, uh, two girls, they came to me and the other one, she was like, I, I finished the seminar and one of them, she was like pushing the other girl. They are young. She said, to talk to him, talk, I can hear them. And then I finished with the guy I'm talking to and she said to me, can I ask you a question? I said, sure. She said, are you Christian Prince? <laughs> 
because they don't know I am a Christian prince. You know, in the in the in the seminar, they don't present me by uh, as a Christian prince. So, I said yes. She said, "See, I told you, it's his voice. <laughs> See, <laughs> See, Senor, I told you, it is him." So you know, my voice is very easy to recognize, and uh, if I, uh, you know, especially if I'm talking about the same topic, right away you will know that this is him. There is no way, you know, that's it. Actually, when I went to the Philippines, there is a group of uh, Christians. They invited me. They contacted me, and they asked me if we can, I can meet them. Then, when we sat together, we we decided to meet in a coffee shop. Now, the guy who contacted me, he did not know how I look like. So we shake hands and we sit together, but they are not sure. This is him. This is not him. That's you know. And then uh, I start talking, and then they took the person who contacted me. And by the way, he is a very famous man in the Philippines. Let me show you. Let me show you who is he. You want to see who is he? I'm sure he will not mind. He is a very famous person in the Philippines because he's a TV host. Um, <clears throat> Let us go to his page in Facebook. Okay, let's see. All right. This is the gentleman which I am talking about. Actually, when I went there, they asked me to do interview with the, uh, the program. It's called what? Um, hmm. Uh, the 700 club the 700 club i did an interview there uh, but anyway this this uh, gentleman here he is a, a tv host and he is an actor his name is mary kiyamo all right let us uh, like here you see him this is one of his uh, uh so he's a very famous man in the philippine but i for me i have no idea who's this guy you know i mean like he was sitting next to me and he was so excited telling me about uh, when i said this to this guy and i was saying to that guy but first time they met me they were like is that him and then they took him in the side later they told me because they were not sure if him they said is that him he said it's, it's, it's his voice yes it's him you know so the funny is I was sitting next to a people who they are very famous and they are like big names in their countries, but they are very excited to be next to me. And I was the one looking at them like, like I don't know who was this guy. I have no idea who's this guy. <laughs> they are actors. They are famous. They are very well known in their country. And they were excited to sit next to me and talk to me. And this is a Christian prince. Look, look this is a Christian prince with us. They are very wonderful people, very nice people, you know. But for me, I have I, I do not know them. I mean, why I will know actors in the Philippines? You know, I have no idea who they are. Uh, but they are very wonderful people. Very, especially this gentleman. Uh, his name is Mary, and this gentleman too. Th this is the one who made an interview with me um, uh, in uh, in the Seven Hundred Club. All right, which means we have. This gentleman, this brother, and this brother. All right. Anyway. So you see, I go, I go, and I show myself. I do similar. Just two, two weeks ago, I was in Texas, and the church is a huge church. And many people, they are using their phones and people. But for me, I don't seek to be known by image i seek to be known as a teacher who teach which means i want my knowledge to be shared with you not me is not is not the important one i'm not the important is the important is 
how we can reach out with knowledge all right cp is a third man in the video i'm not in here i am not those are actors not all of them actually but most of them they are actors but in the philippines they are like big names big shots you know it's not like uh, uh, you know people who did nobody know them <clears throat> But I was the ignorant between them who do not know I'm talking to who, you know, like uh, I wasn't aware who are they, those people, because I'm not from the country and I have no idea you know, what, uh, who I'm talking to. <clears throat> uh, anyway, uh, and by the way, when I was there, you know i was able to meet with the most important people in the country each time i go we meet with senators i meet with congressmen i met like last time i met when i went to the philippine i met with the with the with the founder of the constitution of the philippine uh and, and his son is the head of the senators in the philippine and i met with the uh, foreign minister of the philippine and I met with him before, when he was just a senator, before he became a, a, a foreign minister. I met with the spokesman of the president. I met with, the, I mean, we met with all the big, big, big names in there. But I met them for a reason, not just to visit and to say hello, you know. It was a very important reason. Uh, it had to do with what I do, which is, you know, speaking about the cult of Islam. So God is good, and wherever I go, I find that the Lord, he opened doors and the doors are wonderful and he put in my way wonderful people. As simple as that. All right. Uh, okay, I think we have enough for today. <laughs> Actually, I wanted to open a training center to train people about how to debate uh, Islam. But as you know, we have one problem for us as a Christians. You see, Muslims, they have a lot of money flooded coming from the Middle East, from the oil countries specifically. For me, if I want to do such a thing, and I said many times, I'm willing to do it voluntarily, and I don't want any return. I don't want a salary. I don't want anyone to pay me. And as you see, I'm doing it anyway. I mean, I mean what, I, what more I can do? But in order to do something like this, you have to get support. You have to get people who they are willing to take the work to second stage, or let us say to higher stage. But how you can do it? For me, I can I can volunteer, give my knowledge and my time for free. And I'm not worried about um, paying me. The Lord is always my provider. You know, people, they help. I have my books. People make donations. God is good. But what more I can do? more than what i am doing already let me know so if you know somebody is willing to do such a project i will be happy to teach as simple as that i wanted to do it but as i said you know one man deal is not going to be a deal even jesus himself our lord he have 12 apostles right and those things they are costly it costs a lot of money. It's not a small project. You have you have to have people who they are willing to to help. However, we are doing great work, you know, here in the internet and in YouTube. God is good. You see, there's uh, because when you make a center, a physical center, maybe it's good to teach missionaries how to speak to Muslims, how to approach them, which is good. But the internet is doing great job to educate everybody, not necessarily those who they are missionaries you know what i mean it opened the door of knowledge for everybody you don't have to be a missionary to to be taught all of us we need knowledge uh, there is someone of us who know quite a bit Arab of Arabic and would be happy to help out. It's not about knowing Arabic. It's about, you see, it's about if you are willing to learn, you can learn. You see, I have, I made videos. I I, I, I give 
a lot of my time to teach Arabic. And I made it twice, twice, once for free. And once we said, okay, let us, let us uh, make people pay because the, the first one for free, it was a failure because it's for free. People stop coming. You believe it? People don't like things for free. They think it's nothing because, you know, like, you see, like, if you buy a ticket to go to the movie and then you don't go to the movie, you feel stupid, right? Because you paid for it. But if it was a free, you don't care. You don't go. And this is what my mistake. I thought if I teach Arabic for free, a lot of people will come. So we started, and many people in the beginning, they said, yes, we will join, etc. So first week, maybe we have like 25 people. Second week, we have maybe 13. The week after, we have maybe like seven. The week after, we have three. <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay, well, I give my time for free, but people, even though, even for free, they don't want it for free. You see, they don't appreciate your free. And this is what many people they do with, with the Christ himself. Because Christ, he did not ask you for a turn. So they don't appreciate what is for free. But the fact what Christ did to us is not for free. It was not for free at all. He came to this earth, he humbled himself, he suffered, he was humiliated, he was in the cross. And yet we hear a priest saying to us that he gave you everything for free, which is true. But in the same time, it was not for free. People don't appreciate things for free. They take it, they abuse it, but they don't appreciate it. There's many things around you in life today is for free. And you don't count them because they are for free. You see, like, uh, even though we are going out of topic, but I will give an example. <clears throat> One of you, maybe he is married, and he have a he have a wife. She take care of him. She have patience with him. Uh, she handle all his madness. Sometimes she cook for him. She do laundry. She do whatever she do. But you don't consider what she do for you at all because I mean she is there. She's my wife, so you think it's for free. And because it's for free, this woman she did nothing to you. But the fact she did a lot. Imagine if you have a nurse or a maid doing what she is doing to you. Then you will notice how much for free it is. For sure, we are not comparing between a wife and a maid, but I'm telling you, but because, because people, they have something they are used to. So it became in, in their life like as, a, as, as not, not even to consider as, as, a, as a gift. They take it as it's okay, it's there. You know, okay, I, I change my clothes, I throw it in the basket, and then I came back, I find it a clo a clean and hang up on the closet. So I am used to have somebody doing that to me, and I, 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 never, I never thought that this is, I'm lucky to have that. One day, that person will go from your life, God forbid, either by divorce or by death. And these days, everybody is getting divorced as usual. Because nobody want to stay with God no more. So when that happened to you, you will notice how your life changed. And you will notice what you missed. You will notice how it was and how it became. Same for the women, by the way. There's many women, they don't appreciate their husbands. He work hard, he do his best, etc. And then still she is not happy. And then they fight together. And then one day she asked him to divorce her. And he said, okay, let us divorce. And then after the divorce, they notice what a big mistake she did. So both of them, they will lose. There's no winner in such a situation. But still, both of them, they, they, they reach into that point because they don't have appreciation. Appreciation is very important in life in order to reach success and happiness. A person who don't appreciate, he will never be happy. Imagine you are a person who have the money of Bill Gates. 
but you don't appreciate you will you are very poor you're still very poor because inside you you think you are poor you want more money you are not happy I mean I don't have yet what is enough that's why I want more and why you have this feeling because simply you don't appreciate right so always I hope that all of us we will learn how to appreciate appreciate the drink the cup of water you drink there's people in the desert go and watch some documentary and see how people suffer to get a clean water clean water is a dream for many people you see you look in your cup you find a crystal clear water that is a dream in many many places around the earth there's tens of millions of people around the earth they die because of dirty water every year for you you open the faucet and you find clean water you don't appreciate it let us say let us see if if the water cut from your house what will happen to you what the chaos you will have but because the water is always running there you don't notice it it's there right So we have always to be people who appreciate and the one who appreciate what the Lord gave him, the Lord will give him better and will give him more. Always, always, always be thankful and appreciate. You see, even when, if let us say, uh, I, like, you know, I'm not a rich man, but I am not poor either. And the reason I say I'm not poor, like I am poor, but I'm not poor in the same time. It is enough for me that the Lord, he gave me a brain. Which I really, really appreciate. That is the best gift he gave me. And that gift made me be able to be a better believer and to find the truth. And then it made me able to share my belief and the truth with others. Which is a sword with double sharp edges it helped me and it helped others and the second you appreciate what the lord he gave you 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 go to second stage is giving giving what he, from what he gave you like god he plus you with money so what do you do you just worship the money and you keep it for yourself or you make some other people who need it happy like now we have a Christmas how many of us is willing to help somebody is poor some a child he is orphan some you know a, a woman who don't even have somebody to go and visit her just by visiting you are doing good great work somebody even in jail who don't have anyone to say hello to him you remember what Jesus said I was a stranger and you took me on you took me in i was a prisoner and you visited me i was hungry and you feeded me when you do what jesus told you to do you are doing it to jesus so and we should not only do that in the christmas by the way like because some people sometimes they think okay now christmas is the time to do good every day is the day of god every day is a sabbath if you choose to make it sabbath sabbath many people think sabbath means saturday sabbath is the day you himself you dictate to god so you can make every day a day of sabbath and this is what i do in my life every day i do podcast here we go my voice is gone i did not work in my book i saw a question somebody asked me to explain to refute the muslims i said okay let me do another broadcast so today I have two Sabbath in one day. When you dictate your time to the Lord, the Lord will give you back. It is going to come to you. Don't ask for reward. But the Lord He see and the Lord He is hearing us. All right. So let us, you know, let us all of us learn how to appreciate, learn how to be Christians. Be good to everybody, be good to the Muslims, be good to the Hindus, be good to the atheists, be good. Be good as your father who is holy. 
being bad like sometimes I seen I see comment of uh, people who say Christian they are Christians but they say the f-word how you are a Christian and you are debating a Muslim about something wrong and then you say to him the f-word how you do that that is not a Christian and that is not right and you, you will make the person run away and you will not present Christianity and you present no one you present something evil We always have, you know, uh, 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 we have to be like ambassador for the Christ. I do mistakes. Sometimes I get upset. A Muslim, he is debating me for two hours, three hours. I lose my voice and I lose my patience sometimes, but still I have to maintain my tongue. Don't let anger to control you. All right. No, you should not swear. We as a Christians even are not allowed to take an oath. We don't even allow to 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 say, "I swear in the name of God." I mean, maybe you can do that if it's extremely necessarily because the law required or something. But either you say yay yay or nay nay. That's what Jesus said. People who they are always decent, they do not need to swear because they are decent. They always tell the truth. Right? Shia are the same as the Muslims. Somebody is asking me about the Shia, I believe. Shia are the same as Muslim Sunni. It's two, two, it's, it's a, it is two faces for one coin. Both are pagan. Both are cult and both believe in violence actually the, the the Sunni violence today is extreme because of the Shia you see Western Western government they are very famous to be having always stupid leaders I don't know why I mean always they elect stupid ones if you don't believe me look around you I don't care who they are even the one we think he is better than them, like you know, for for like for me, uh, I'm happy that Trump became a president. But Trump is not really that genius or smart compared to the rest. I mean, compared to the rest, he is, but he is not really that smart. He do a lot of poo-poo. So Western Western leaders, they always support evil without knowing. When the Iranian government under the king collapsed. All European countries and Western and the NATO, they stood watching as if nothing happened. And then the Satan, the devil, he was growing and getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And all European countries and American, they are doing nothing, waiting for the devil to get bigger. And now today the devil became so big. And the devil, he extended his branches. So right now, Iran, which is the founder of all Islamic terrorist groups, even ISIS, Al-Qaeda, Muslim Brotherhood. Muslim Brotherhood, by the way, the first center for them, the first center of the Muslim Brotherhood bought by Iran, in case you do not know. It was the Iranian who bought for them the first center in Cairo. Cash. From the money of the Shia Mullah. The Muslim Sunni, they got jealous how the Shia they can establish an Islamic state, and we don't have one. So this is why we see the flourishing of Islamic terrorist organization. By allowing the Islamic Sunni the Shia state of Iran to exist. You invited all the, the terrorists in the world to dream about the same dream, to have a terrorist state the same as Iran. And this is what ISIS is about, and this is what Al-Qaeda is about, and this is what Taliban is about. All is inspired by Iran. Iran right now have branches of terrorism in Venezuela, South America. You name it, everywhere. A few years ago, Hezbollah, 
the owner bank for more than 30 years in Canada. And the Canadian government just found out about them last year or two years ago. Grocery stores, gas stations, all is owned by Hezbollah in America, in Canada, in Australia. Money is coming like rain. The beast of terrorism became so big because Western decided to close their eyes and became blind. And now they are paying the price. They don't know how to fight it. Just today, I saw it in the news, a person from Ohio who converted to Islam, he decided to kill as many Jews as he can. I heard in the news that the Muslims, they decide to donate or to collect donation for the Jews who killed in Pennsylvania before, correct? And I heard one of you, he sent me a link, I'm not sure if this is true, that the Muslim, they collected a lot of donation, supposed that they will give it to the victims in the synagogue. And then they gave them, I think, uh, as, as I, I heard, uh, 20,000, something like that, or 18,000, and they took the rest of them. They took of the rest of the donation to their pocket. 